GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad ships with a whole heap of sounds, but what if you want more? What if you want more loop? What if you want more samples? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can download any MP3 or WAV file, import it into your GarageBand project, and use it in your songs. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today. And if you're new around here, what I like to do is help you create, record and release your best music. So if you subscribe to the channel, you'll be kept in the loop with all of my new videos that come out almost every day. Now in this video, we're doing something very cool. I'm going to be downloading some sounds from freesound.org, my favorite online sample and loop library. And we're gonna be bringing those into GarageBand. So I'll show you how you can do all of that right here on your iPhone or your iPad. So let's jump in and take a look now. Here we are back in one of my favorite places to be in the world, which is GarageBand here on my iPhone. So we're gonna tap on GarageBand, we're gonna tap Create New Document and go Audio Recorder. And now we're just gonna hit our Track View so that we've just got a blank track here. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using the Loops option up here and the Files option to actually download and bring in some MP3 and WAV files into our track here. So we've got our nice blank track ready to go. So let's jump over and download some samples and some loops that we can then bring in and create our song. To download our WAV and MP3 samples and loops, we're gonna be using the EDL browser and freesound.org. Now I've got another video where I go into more detail about how to do this, but we're gonna do it again really quickly here. If you want more detail though, you can check that link, which will be up the top there right now and down in the description at the end of the video. So what we wanna do is we'll go into search sounds. Now I'm gonna download the same sound that I used in that example because I just happen to really like this loop. It's called the Warrior Break, if I could spell and hit go and that is going to go and find, here it is. So here is our WAV file. We just need to tap on the link here and it's going to open up and we should be able to scroll down here and tap on download like so and it will ask us where we would like to actually download this to. We're gonna just tap download this time and there it is down in the bottom left there, we've got it downloading. So it's transferring that WAV file and it is nearly ready. In fact, it is now done. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tap on these three little lines to the right here and I'm gonna tap open in because this will allow us to save it to our files. So in the bottom left, we're gonna tap save to files and then what I'm gonna do, because I wanna use these in my GarageBand project, I'm gonna go on my iPhone or it'll be on my iPad if you're using an iPad, GarageBand, and then our GarageBand file transfer folder because this is what the loops or the files option in loops defaults to when we go there. So if we add our files directly into here, they'll be instantly accessible in our GarageBand project. So let's tap on add and there we go. That has now been saved. So we'll go back to browse. Now I want some other samples here. So I'm just gonna play around here and see. Let's go and try and find something that's like a guitar, uh, some sort of guitar hit. So like a short sort of guitar sound that we can incorporate into this project. So we'll come down here and you can see by the waveform, you can play these. So you can actually hit play. It's gonna cut out my screen recorder audio, so I won't do it here, but I'm just gonna download a couple of uh, examples here. Let's just tap on guitar hit and that should open up here like so. We'll come down, we'll hit download. And you can see how quickly you can just sort of start building up these samples. So we're gonna tap download. That one starts downloading in our bottom left here, like so. Bingo, complete, ready to go. So we can do the same thing with this guitar hit. We're gonna tap on it, we're gonna open in, and then we're gonna go save to files, and then we're going to add to GarageBand file transfer. So that is all good. We've now got the uh, warrior break and we've got the guitar hit. So what about some other sort of uh, percussion sound? What about a riser? Risers are always cool, yeah? So let's type in riser in our search box and hit go. Now, as I'm searching for these, keep in mind that if you are using these in a commercial release or you plan to use these to monetize your songs, keep an eye on, there's information there about the licensing. So if they're Creative Commons or Creative Commons with attribution, you can use them, but you do need to tread carefully. If you are downloading loops and samples to use in your songs, you do need to make sure that you have permission to do so. Otherwise, you can find yourself getting into trouble. All right, so we've got Riser Symbol and Riser Ominous. Let's just grab both of these, shall we, just for fun? We'll grab Riser Ominous. Um, 
ominous. And now what you'd usually do is you'd preview these, but like I said, I can't, otherwise we'll cut out my audio. You might think that's a good thing, you'll stop being able to hear me. Uh, we'll download here, and yep, we'll download again, and then it pops it. Now here are our ads. So yes, this browser is ad supported. So we're gonna hit the X on that one because we don't wanna buy any doors right now. And we'll go to our downloads. Let's leave it at that. Let's leave it with those three files. That'll be enough to for me to show you how we can integrate these into a project in GarageBand. So now let's jump back to GarageBand and we'll bring these files in. I'll show you how you can use these in a GarageBand project back in our GarageBand project. And what you'll probably notice straight away is up by our loops icon, we've got a little number three. And that means we've got some new files that GarageBand will let us bring in. So let's tap on loops and here they are. So all my other old files are in here, but the three new files here are this guitar hit, this warrior break, and this riser ominous. So we can bring those in, but first, what I'm going to do, you might've noticed that the warrior break is at 133 BPM. So when you're importing a loop, it's important to match up the tempo, the BPM of your project with the tempo of the loop. So I'm gonna to come to tempo here and we're gonna tap and hold and slide this up until we hit 133, like so and then tap back out. The other thing you wanna check is if you hit the little plus button here in the top right, just under your spanner, you wanna make sure that your sections are on automatic. That means that no matter what size file you drop in here, there's gonna be enough space for it. Otherwise, it's gonna limit you to those eight bars, which is not gonna be good. I think this is an eight bar loop anyway, so it wouldn't matter in this case, but for the safe side, if you're importing an entire song, a four minute song, you need to make sure that's automatic or you'll only get eight bars of that song. All right, let's now tap on our loop icon here. Now, the first thing we'll bring across is our warrior break. So we're gonna tap and hold and then drag this over and we'll just drag it onto a fresh track like so. And there is our break. If we hit play, it sounds a bit like this. And what you can hear there is that the metronome is exactly in time. Because we've matched up those BPMs, it's gonna be sounding good. So we can turn the metronome off now because we now have our cool drum beat, our break as our metronome. We don't need that anymore. Okay, let's go for number two. So now we can tap on our loop icon again. I'm interested to hear this riser. So we can actually preview these sounds by the way. So if I just tap on this, yeah, there's our riser sound, which is gonna work well here. We're gonna tap and hold, drag this in, and now let's position this. Now we can zoom in on our track because what you kind of want is you want your riser to come up into a beat like this. So if we zoom all the way in, our snap to grid's gonna go off and we can, yep, we can light it up like that. So let's just take a listen to this beat as we go into sort of our second half. Yeah, how cool is that? So yeah, you can see that some of these things like risers and cymbal swells and other things that you don't necessarily have in GarageBand, you can now quickly bring in here using these cool functions. All right, let's go with our last one here, which is our guitar hit. So let's uh, tap on it to preview. <laughs> Wow, that's a guitar hit, all right. <laughs> We're gonna tap and hold and drag that one into here. So you'll notice here that we can use things like this. That didn't work, we'll try that again. Tap and hold, guitar hit, bring it in, let it go. There we go, didn't give it enough time. Uh, you'll notice that I've used one of these is a loop. So that's gonna be sort of a continuous sound and the rest of these are individual samples that we're bringing in. So you can bring in both types of sound, mix and match and make them what you want them to be. And I'm gonna show you something even cooler that we can do with a sample in just a moment. But if we just wanted to put this guitar sound in here. Let's say we wanted it to come in here at bar three and we wanted it to hit there. Whoop, just covered it over there, put it to bar three. Let's go back. I'm just gonna drop the volume of this one a bit because it's gonna kick in pretty loud and you're gonna blow your ears off there. So we'll hit this play and now we'll have our guitar kick in and then we'll have our riser and we'll see what this sounds like. Yeah, so yeah, maybe that's not exactly how you would have this in your final mix, but I did for, for picking three random, pretty random samples and throwing them at a project, I think uh, we've got something pretty cool or maybe the start of something cool. Now I mentioned that we can do something even cooler with samples and that is we can use our sampler to actually add these sounds and have more control. So let's jump into the sampler now and I'll show you that. Okay, so firstly, let's mute this guitar sound because what we're actually gonna do is we're going to add a new track. So in the bottom left here, we'll tap add track and now we'll add a sampler track. So here in the keyboard at the bottom here, we'll tap on sampler 
And what we can now do here, if you haven't used a sampler before, it's very cool. You can record your own samples or you can import samples. So in the top right here, we can tap on import and now we can actually import any of these files as a sample. So I'm just gonna tap over on the right here, the little box with the down arrow next to our guitar hit. So we'll tap on that and that's gonna bring our sample in to the sampler. So what we can now do is if we tap on a key, it's going to play that sample. Now, because it's a sample, it's, it's going to change the speed. So if we go really low down, it's going to be a lot slower than up the top here. Okay, now that we're all set up, what we can do is we'll tap on the little knob in the top right corner here, and now we've got our keyboard that we can actually play our sampled instrument. So I'm going to hit record, and let's just record a little bit of a, a guitar sound here for some fun. And you can hear there that uh, I've got velocity sensitivity turned on, so it played those samples uh, a slightly different velocity, but we can come in here. The beauty part of this is that we can actually come in and edit those and actually change the velocity after the fact. So if we find our tracks that we played here, and let's just turn, turn that down a little bit. And the same with this one. Alrighty, so let's play this back now and take a listen to what this track sounds like with this sampled guitar. And you know what? It's missing that first hit. So what we just need to do is drag this out a little bit. For some reason, it cut that off. It does that occasionally with a MIDI track. Don't worry, you just need to drag the handle out and there it is back again. Let's take a listen. So yeah, not going to the top of the charts anytime soon, but you can see how quickly, that this is just three random samples that I happen to pull out here, that you can bring things together. You can add things in to your GarageBand projects using new sounds that you don't necessarily have here in GarageBand and create your own unique sounds using some of these free samples and free loops that you can download directly to your iPhone or your iPad from sites like freesound.org. How awesome is that? You can now download any MP3 or WAV file from anywhere online, bring it into your GarageBand project just using your iPhone or your iPad, which I think is pretty darn cool. Now keep in mind those licensing issues and permission issues. Make sure that you're using loops and samples that you're allowed to use in your songs, especially if you're gonna be releasing them commercially. Thanks again for watching. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Don't tell anyone, but the people that hang around to the end of the video are my absolute favorites. If you'd like to check out two more videos, we've got two linked down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Life Today icon in the top right corner or head on over to studiolifetoday.com for even more audio goodness.